Question six then from paper two of the 2015 new hire. There we go. Look, scale our products. It's a seven mark question. It's actually fairly straightforward. Even though that diagram might look a bit scary to begin with, it's made up of those very useful components for vectors. A parallelogram, meaning opposite sides are parallel and the same length. So you've got the same vectors. And an equilateral triangle, meaning all the sides are the same. And you'd also know the angles, they're all 60. So it shouldn't be that bad. So the first part here for three marks, evaluate this. Well, the first part would be multiply it out. It'll be P dot Q plus P dot R. The meaning of the scalar product is the product of the lengths. So don't just write PQ plus PR. It's the product of the lengths that go in the same direction as one or other of them. And the first mark was for multiplying out the bracket to get the sum of those two scalar products. So P dot Q, or didn't put the direction of Q in, isn't just the length of Q times the length of P. It's only that part of Q that goes the same way as P. It's only that component there. So it's the length of P, which is 3. I told you that. The length of Q is also 3, but the angle between them is 60 because it's an equilateral triangle. P dot R is easier, though. There's P, there's R. They're perpendicular, so that comes to 0. I'll put the reason. P is perpendicular to R. Now, you think that would have been the first mark, but it's it's not. No, because it's the, the second. The first mark comes from evaluating this and then adding the zero one to a final answer. So it's sort of like a first mark there. Sort of like well, a second. Well, that part's going to be nine times. Now, the cos of 60 is a half. So it's that plus the zero, which is nine upon two. Now, that's the mark. And the other mark was for adding this zero onto that product there. So I'm just going to put it here for adding zero one to it for three marks. Ah, uh, there you go then. Part B, just for the one mark, express EC in terms of P, Q, and R. EC, how do you get from E to C? That's that diagonal there in the middle of that parallelogram. Well, the way you go from E to C is you follow paths that you know. You could go up to D and then down from D to C and they say, well, I don't know DC, but it'll be the same as EB. And you think, well, I don't know EB, but that'll be equivalent to going down to A and back. And by the time you've done that, you're as well just saying, how do you go from E to C? Follow paths that you know. I'll go from E to A. Then I'll go from A to B. And then I'll go from B to C. Remember, of course, that B to C is just R. So E to A will be negative Q, A to B will be P, and B to C is R, and that was it. And there was just one mark for stating it, though. I quite often put down this derivation, first of all, what was the pathway? So part C. Given that AE dot EC is this expression, 9 root 3 minus 9 upon 2, it says find R. So that means find the length of R. What's the magnitude of the vector R? It says that quite clearly, find R. Well, you could think geometrically, oh, AE looks like this, but EC unfortunately looks like this, so I'd have to move that to the beginning of this one and then think of an angle between them. But you don't need to, because you've got expressions for them both. AE is just Q. And EC, and that was the reason why you worked it out, was negative Q plus P plus R. So it was guiding you there. And that expression should come to 9 root 3 minus 9 upon 2. But that doesn't seem to be the first mark yet for that substitution until you've actually multiplied this out. But you'd be doing that anyway. So it's negative q dot q. You could jump in with q squared, as in just the length, times the length, plus q dot p, which you've worked out already, plus q dot r should come to 9 root 3 minus 9 upon 2. That seems to be the first mark. Now the next mark it says is to start evaluating. Well, q dot q is straightforward because it's a vector parallel to itself, so that'll be all of 3 times 3. Q dot P, you've already worked out. 3 times 3 times the cosine 
of 60. It was already worked out, so I'll just put in the half because I've done that. Q dot R, well Q is 3, but I don't know what R is. Times the cosine of, and this is the thing, what is the angle between Q and R? What is the angle that's used? It's certainly it's not this one. The angle you use is the angle where they would both radiate from the same point. So that's Q. An example of R would be here. That line is perpendicular to the base, so that makes a nice little right angle here. So if that's 60, that's 30. And that should equal 9 root 3 minus 9 upon 2. So starting to evaluate, we'd make that the next mark. Now this part here, they're both the same, 9s and halves. What you've got there is 9, negative 9 upon 2. You've got negative 9 plus 9 upon 2, so that's negative 9 upon 2, plus 3 times. Now you know the cos of 30 is root 3 upon 2, but I don't know r, and that should be 9 root 3 minus 9 upon 2. Those will cancel out when you bring them over. So you're just left with 3 root 3 upon 2 r equals 9 root 3. You could think things cancel out or just take it all over. Divide by 3 root 3, multiply by 2, and you've got the length of r is, that cancels, that goes down to 3 times 2 is 6. So there's the last mark. The length of that side, the magnitude of that vector is 6. Oh, so it should be, as far as you're concerned, sitting the exam, because it's quite clear in the higher exam, all numerical answers must be fully simplified. But for some reason in the marking scheme, they're letting you have the final mark if you end up with 3 root 3 over cos 30. And I would say you would never consider doing that because you know the value of cos 30. Just like in the first one, when you evaluated p dot q, you would ne never leave it as 9 cos 60. But again, as far as you're concerned, the procedure for the higher is all numerical answers must be fully simplified. Unless the marking scheme states otherwise, but that's after the event. You're not to know that.